YouTube star and former Vlog Squad member Big Nick says he witnessed Hollywood celebrities actually sell their souls when he was big into Hollywood. And Todd White says that Jesus became a God-hating, Satan-worshipping child molester on the cross. Stay with us as we look at these and other stories on the 511 News. Now, there are two kinds of people in the world, only two kinds, not black and white, not rich and poor. There are those who are dead in sin, and there are those who are dead to sin. After three nights of unbridled lawlessness across London, the contagion is spreading. The problem is that God has already judged this. He has judged murder already. I don't need to question it. I don't need to ask and wonder what his plan is. We're commanded as Christians not to participate in the works of darkness, but expose them. Welcome back to the 511 News. I'm your host, Chad Davidson of Good Fight Ministries. And on today's episode, we're going to be talking about a couple of different topics, those inside and outside of the church, and a literal admission of witnessing, witnessing Hollywood celebrities actually selling their soul to Satan. And we're going to be hearing that later. And also, we're going to hear why it matters, why your theology actually matters, how you interpret Scripture and how it matters in the things that you say, and why Todd White proves once again that he is just absolutely a heretic and one that uses bombastic and ridiculous language in order to probably get this, his attention. But it is our job to make sure we are correcting all these speculations and lofty things brought up against the knowledge of God and bring them captive to the obedience of Christ. But with all that said, as many as you, of you might know, YouTube has really turned into a land for the common person to become a millionaire, I know that sounds very weird because there's so many channels that don't get too many likes or subscribes, but the fact is, is that people like Pootie Pie or people like Logan uh, and Jake Paul have made millions of dollars, Rhett and Link, just doing normal stuff, and people have watched it, and after watching it, uh, they ended up making a ton of money from it, so that has also necessitated other followers of them to say, hey, I want to do the same thing. I want to be a YouTube vlogger. In fact, that has climbed up the list of occupations for children that they want to do. Some used to want to be police officers or firemen or construction workers or something. But now a YouTube vlogger is one of the most sought after positions when children are thinking about their future careers. And so when we look at this and we see this, we recognize, one, a lot of these people are pretty immoral. Logan and Jake Paul specifically, Pootie Pie and all these guys, a lot of them have even been caught using racial slurs or in the case of the Pauls, uh, going and looking at people who have committed suicide, even if it was fake or not, but going to places where they commit suicide and making light of it. People have really pointed out that these guys really lack any real moral fiber, and we couldn't expect nothing more, really, especially when something is really popular in the world. You expect that the fact is, is that it's probably going to be immoral because that's because they follow the prince of the power of the air who works through the sons of disobedience. And when people are idolized and lifted up onto these pedestals, the fact is, is that they're usually being used by Satan, not only to get people away from worshiping the one true God, but get them to follow someone else and wait for them to get their uploads. And I want to give a little backstory because I was watching somebody share their testimony online. It had been sent to me a number of months ago, and I said, okay, I'll finally get a chance to check this out because the person we're going to be talking about today was originally a member of what is called the Vlog Squad. And most people know the leader of the Vlog Squad as Dave Dobrik. And Dobrik, like Big Nick, who we'll be talking about, really started to get a lot of followers on 
the now defunct and deleted Vine, uh, you know, app that people were using that you would make like a six second video. And Dave Dobrik, when he had a number of followers, saw this guy who called himself Big Nick and started collabing with him and doing videos with him and so forth before eventually Twitter, who is the one who made Vine, would eventually absolve the entire application. And then they already made their transition to YouTube. And Dave Dobrik, along with a number of other people, were making videos and people were watching him and they were putting ads to it and being getting sponsors like Chipotle and so forth and making a lot of money. In fact, Dave Dobrik on his YouTube channel right now has over 18 million subscribers and over 8 billion, eight, that's, that's not with an M, that's with a B, 8 billion views on a lot of his vlogs that a lot of people point out are very sexist. There's some weird stuff. People have even said there was some racist things going on with other members who were on the vlog squad uh, where he actually had convinced and blindfolded one of them to kiss another man uh, and then posted this. But when it came to Big Nick, I watched him not only give his testimony, but he actually went on a show and explained why he left the the vlog squad who had made him a lot of money and helped him make famous. Big Nick himself has over a million subscribers on his YouTube channel. And these guys are huge. They make a lot of money. They have a lot of appearances. Dave Dobrik, for an example, for example, has been his voice has been used on a number of projects uh, for cartoons and so forth. And these guys, these guys have an influence all over the world and they are in touch with Hollywood. In fact, when you look at Dave Dobrik, one of the guys on the vlog squad happened to be from Drake and Josh. Josh Peck was actually one of the guys on vlog squad. And these guys they're making videos, sometimes collaborating, sometimes on their own. Each one of them on the vlog squad, I think there's about 20 members, would have their own YouTube channel with a ton of people, but they would collab and make a ton of videos with a ton of views, a lot of it doing really senseless and dumb things. I mean, that's just the reality, and people are watching them and then idolizing it and then doing it themselves. And I say all this to give background because when we bring up some of these things, a lot of times the comments are like, well, I've never heard of this person, so it doesn't affect me. But the reality is 18 million people have heard of them, let alone the people that don't subscribe to him and the people that no longer subscribe to him after people have come out from the vlog squad and one of them broke their face, uh, their skull because of a trick that they had done. Some of them, uh, as I said, uh, sexual assault allegations and a number of reasons, uh, in fact, even Dave Dobrik has been demonetized. And when it came to Big Nick, when he talked about why he left what was known as the Vlog Squad, it was mostly because he was the butt of every joke. Um, when they would talk about him, uh, they would specifically mention his height because um, Big Nick, and I'm sure a ton of you guys have friends like this. I have somebody that I've been friends with named Stephen Little, but He's about 300 pounds. And so a lot of times we, you know, use those names like Big Nick. Nick actually uh, has dwarfism and is short. And guess what? Mr. Dave Dobrik would joke around about it a lot and would demean him. And Big Nick said about leaving the vlog squad that that had a lot to do with him kind of just stepping out and no longer being with them because he realized that that's what he was have, having happen. He was the butt of the joke. They just sat there and made fun of him and it made him quite depressed. But he specifically talked about not only leaving that and talking about how Dave somewhat was almost like a cult leader and he tried to be as nice as possible to his former friend. But the reality was a lot of times that's what it sounded like, that these guys were following this person and this is what money does, this is what power does and this is the corruption that takes place when these guys start off as little kids then make it big, make a bunch of money this is what happens. And Big Nick was no, you know, no different than them in terms of that and him getting out there and becoming a huge sensation online. But when quarantine happened, he actually described, um, I think, a lot of what people went through in terms of he's out here locally in California and we did have some pretty tight quarantines early on during COVID. 
But for him, he believed this was a blessing in disguise. And I want to point this out. I always have to give a disclaimer. I don't know much about Big Nick, his theology and so forth. I have seen him preach about hell and judgment day and those things on the few videos that I've seen of him. And that was all good and seen him talk about those things, which is really, really important. But I don't know everything he holds to or where he's at. But some of the things he said did catch my attention. And I want you guys to hear this of how he says he came to faith in Jesus Christ because he talks specifically about what took place during quarantine. It wasn't until I would say during quarantine, right? When quarantine hit, everything kind of was at a standstill. We couldn't really do the things we used to do. I, I wasn't going out partying, you know, living for the world per se. And I really had to just put my life on hold. And when I was in that kind of period where I was just not doing anything, I just went on my computer. I started to do research and stuff. And um, that's all I had. All I had was my office. I couldn't go out. I mean, we were locked down, right? So... Uh, I'm on my computer just kind of doing research and I'm kind of starting to figure out the truth about and I had to see the dark to get to the light but I'm kind of figuring the truth out about Satanism right and I'm like huh that's so weird that this stuff really exists because you know I just thought the devil was like a cartoon character or something you know pitchfork red horns whatever I was like oh that stuff is just like in cartoons and movies that stuff's not real yeah I started to figure that out more and more and so I was like kind of becoming more open-minded because I was kind of looking at things that were questioning my reality and my view on things I just keep doing Doing more and more research and you know I'm figuring out like like I said with the whole Satanism thing earlier I'm figuring out like more of the horrors of it and the reality of it and I'm like whoa this is crazy and I started kind of researching stuff online that led me to the Bible that was verifying my information that I was looking at on my computer and I'm like hmm okay the Bible obviously knows something that I don't so you know I'm gonna figure it out I was on a mission for the truth it's interesting, as you see him end that with, he was on a mission to find truth. And one of the things he talked about specifically was looking at Satanism. Satanism. He questioned his entire reality, and he was looking at Satanism, and he was like, wait a second, researching it. I do wonder, and I'm sure if you guys have been on Good Fight long enough, you kind of wonder if he was looking at Satanism and then looking at the Bible and recognizing that the Bible has a lot to say about this, and the Bible would know a lot more than he does, you wonder if maybe some of those YouTube videos might have been some good fight videos where we've talked about it. And the truth is, is one of the things that we talk about here at Good Fight is the, the fact that when it comes to the spiritual realm, when it comes to the spiritual reality that is before us, recognizing this life is not just physical means, it's not just brainwaves going through your mind, but there are actually thoughts. There are things that are outside of the physical realm. And we live in a metaphysical reality. And the fact is, is that the Bible is the only one that speaks accurately to this, to, de to de demons. The only one that, spe that speaks accurately to angels and miracles. And the things that we see in scripture are the things that we see in reality as well. And so the Bible is ultimately where you're going to find these truths. But one of the good things is, is we have been able to, the name of this show is 511 News. That is for Ephesians 511, that we are not supposed to fellowship or have anything in common with or any participation in the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather, but rather we are to expose them. And so that has been our goal. And I just, you know, just surmising if he's going on YouTube, finding out about Satanism, he might have clicked on a couple of good fight videos that speak a lot to it. And one of the things that if you go into and look at some of the Good Fight videos that you'll find and the articles, specifically one article that I'll always point back to, and that is the, the truth about satanic cults that Pastor Joe Schimmel wrote. In that article, not only does he specifically mention his interviews with Susan Atkins, him and his wife, Joe and Lisa Schimmel, developed a relationship going and speaking to her. Susan Atkins had made a profession of faith in uh, prison after she was involved with the Manson family murders. But the connection there with also Anton LaVey, we actually have images of Susan Atkins with Anton LaVey, the founder of the Church of Satan, the writer of the Satanic Bible, Anton Xander LaVey. And she said specifically that Anton told her that they worship a literal Satan. Not just this idea of pitchfork and horns, 
but a literal Satan, that they actually worship Satan. And in that same article, Truth About Satanic Cults, which we'll put a link in the description here, we specifically see that Anton LaVey, when he was pressed about whether or not he worshipped a real Satan, really worshipped Satan, not nature, not the earth, and all this language that they'll use, but did he worship a real Satan? He says, of course he did. And what does he say? He says, if he had played his hand too hard and said, yeah, we're worshiping Satan, then he would have not been able to grow the church of Satan. So this is the reality. You've been played a parlor trick. If you are somebody who's practicing Satanism, thinking you're just being rebellious towards Christians and you you just are really mad at Christians and you're really rebellious, really Satan has you and he's laughing at you. And that's the reality, whether you think it's nature or the earth and you worship the creature rather than the creator, that's what's going on. But just know you've been duped. You were duped by Aleister Crowley and you're duped by Anton Zandler and LeVay and you're duped by your own flesh, which wants these desires. But in this message that Big Nick gave to a youth group locally here, It's really interesting because he doesn't just say he started to research Satanism, but something started to click. Some memories started to click for him in regards to what it looked like when he was actually in the midst of Hollywood as a celebrity, as Big Nick, as he talks about, he practiced witchcraft and so forth, playing with Ouija boards. He was drinking and smoking and partying and all this stuff and really found no joy in it because you won't find lasting joy. You'll find some happiness, but you'll never find the joy that comes from the Lord that is unexplainable, that we don't even have words to explain the joy that we get from the Lord. They are unexplainable. And so he then talks about the things that he witnessed and his viewpoint originally and how it changed now looking back on the things that took place that he saw, guys. He saw, now he's talking about idolatry here, But he saw these things with his own eyes. A Hollywood insider telling us what he saw. You guys can hear it from his own lips. If you put your video games over God, like video games is your God because you're spending more time devoting your passion and joy to something that's not going to have any importance when you pass away. So there's a lot of scriptures, Colossians 3, 5, Jonah 2, 8. One, there's like over 100 verses about idolatry. And I just want to kind of let you guys know that really be careful of the people you're worshiping and idolizing because I'll tell you right now, like I come from the Hollywood industry and a lot of that stuff is satanic. Like a lot of these people are doing satanic worship. I have seen it in front of my own eyes so be careful what celebrities you're you know really following and you know just excited after musicians because a lot of these people have sold their souls to the devil i don't say that to be like you know oh like but no it's a real thing like like i said i've seen it i was it was in the scene right and i would even see that stuff before i was saved and i would just be like oh whatever the devil's not real like that's just probably just whatever but no now that i think about it and like i am saved i'm like whoa i actually saw some crazy stuff i actually saw some crazy stuff. He talks about these same people that he was partying with, making it big with, were the same ones who were selling their soul. And he originally thought, oh, this is just, you know, Satan's just this cartoon character. But now he's seeing people really be demon worshipers. And one thing I want to bring out here is you think about what he's actually talking about when it comes to idolatry and so forth, that people have these idols. And he was talking about video games even there, that people, they care more about their video games even than praying. They care more about their video games. Imagine and you got to ask yourself, parents, do your kids, do you have a time limit for them on their video games where, oh, it's only, they can only get three hours today. But yet, if you ask them how much you read your Bible, uh, they just don't have a lot of time, right? Uh, you have a time limit for them on their video games. But hey, do we have enough time to read your Bible? Uh, the thing which, as you know, it says in, that Paul told to Timothy, the thing which is able to save, their, save his soul, you know, the word of God. It dwelled in him richly from his own mother and grandmother. But I I think about those things, but, but this is somebody who saw these things and now looking back goes, wait a second, now that I recognize the reality of what was taking place, these guys really were selling their soul ultimately. Isn't that crazy to think about? I mean, we do need more people to come out and tell the truth, to say what's going on. So less and less Christians are worshiping these people. 
because that is what's going on. That's the idolatrous worship that is going on. These celebrities, these YouTubers can't wait for another video to drop from these guys and, and these girls that are, are, I mean, this is just ridiculous stuff that they do. I, 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 I wish I could describe uh, there used to be a show, and I can't even say the name because it's a cuss word, where they would do all these really, really dumb things and injure themselves. And people would watch it and people would enjoy it. And I just think to myself, what what on earth is going on these days that for hours and hours and hours on end, young kids, people are turning on these YouTube channels with people playing tricks on their friends and hurting them and harming them and thinking that it's funny. When you listen to an insider, not only talk about that a lot of these people you worship, a lot of these people that you lift up and watch every day, that they're actually Satan worshipers. He's saying from an inside look, the same thing that we've been saying at a distance, that these people are being used by Satan without a doubt. We need to take that, heed that and say, that's quite interesting. And we need to expose it and bring people to the light. Why would someone want to worship somebody that is going to fail them and not care about them? I remember just watching recently, and I don't know if it was a fake thing. These guys use so much fake nonsense and smoke and mirrors, but Logan Paul had somebody who said they quit their $100,000 job to come work for him and be his assistant. And he basically was like, I I don't even know. I don't want you in my life. I don't know you. And the guy made a video of himself crying. A grown man made a video of himself crying because somebody didn't want him as assistant. This is the stuff that's going on. Recognize it. Point it out. Call it wicked. That's what it is. It's wicked idolatry. They've put their trust in men. Woe unto them that put their trust in men, as Jeremiah 17 says. We have to make sure we recognize this, especially, it's it's interesting. Because when we look at the false gods of the nations, whether it's, you know, Zeus or so forth, so often when we find out about their backstory, so many of them are so immoral. And that's the truth. That's the reality of these celebrities today. So so many of them are so immoral. When people meet people, they're just broken. Like, oh, I thought he would be a lot nicer. I thought he'd be like this. I thought she would be like this. But then you find out, oh, what happened with Ellen? Oh, so she wasn't this nice bubblegum lady. She was actually really mean to people. And people go, oh, man, that ruins it for me. Well, good. I hope it does. Because we need to put our faith in Jesus He is the only one who is perfect and never lets us down. He was perfect, absolutely perfect. He committed no sin. Nothing evil was found in him, period. Which brings me to Mr. Heretic Todd White. Todd White, we've done things on his uh, recanting of some of his false doctrines, only to be friends with Benny Hinn still and so forth and we've tried to look at some of the things he's taught, but I'm going to let you hear. I, I want to read from a little bit more because we're going to play a short clip so you can hear it. Uh, there is this, when he teaches, he's always wearing the same shirt. There's music in the background. He usually has those weird shoes that have the toes on them thing going on, but not today, I guess. He uh, Maybe he's gotten away from that over time, but he, uh, you know, we could show videos of him, you know, lengthening legs and and doing all this, this weird and wacky uh, treasure hunting stuff, but What I want to show is doctrine matters, what you believe about text and how you look at text and how you have an understanding of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ actually matters. And so I'm going to let you hear a short clip and then I'm going to read just a little more so you guys can hear what he had to say when attempting to do some exegesis on 2 Corinthians 5, 21. What does it mean that he who knew no sin became sin? Jesus became bestiality on a tree. Jesus became sex trafficking on a tree. Jesus became every lustful thought on a tree. It's no joke, it's real. Jesus became child molester on a tree. Jesus became Taliban Christian murderer on a tree. Jesus became sacrificing babies on a tree. Jesus, our Jesus became that on the tree. That's what it means. He who knew no sin became sin. Guys, this is why it's so important to understand the whole of scripture when you look at something. 
when 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 tells us that he who knew no sin became sin on our behalf, that we may become the righteousness of God. When it says that, it's specifically talking about that he was our offering for sin, not that Jesus actually became and turned into a child molester on the cross, but that just as the sacrifices over and over again were of a perfect, unblemished lamb, our Jesus was a perfect, unblemished lamb, and he was the perfect guilt offering. I believe there's some differences here also when we think of the Hebrew in Isaiah 53, um, specifically when it has to do with the guilt offering that Jesus became. Jesus being that guilt offering in the prophesied verses of Isaiah 53 says he is the Assam, not the Ashem. One is guilty and one is guilt offering. Jesus was never guilty, but he was the perfect, unblemished, sacrificed lamb, the Passover lamb for us. So that, guess what? For you and I, we are very similar. I think about the Passover lamb, because he is called our Passover. That is Jesus Christ. And if you remember the Passover, in the Passover, God is doing something to Egypt. He's bringing down all of their false gods, but specifically, he's going to be taking every firstborn child from its parent. And I believe in what's called biblically as the age of accountability, what we talk about in theology, more or less, as the age of accountability. And what I do believe is that those firstborn were not simply being killed by God, but also being taken back. And those parents were not going to be having the right of having those children. But the Israelites were specifically given something. God gave them the Passover. And what he gave them was a Passover lamb. And that blood was going to be put on their doorpost. It was going to be a perfect unblemished lamb, just as Jesus is and was the perfect unblemished lamb for what for us. And they would have to put that blood on their doorpost. So when that angel came to take those children, they wouldn't take anyone who had the blood on their doorpost. And now for us as believers, as Jesus is our Passover, we place the blood of Jesus Christ on the doorpost of our heart. And the death angel passes over us. And we do not see the second death. And when we die, to be absent with the body is to be present with the Lord because the blood of Jesus Christ covers us, not only covers, but pays for our sin because he's the perfect, unblemished lamb who never sinned. Jesus was never a child molester. Jesus was never Taliban. Jesus never practiced bestiality. And even in the payment of that sin did not actually and literally become a child molester. This kind of language that Todd White uses in, in to, I guess, get attention is sick and disgusting. And no, I don't see Jesus as a child molester when I look at him at the cross. I see Jesus as what he is, the perfect and unblemished lamb. That is what he is called. He is the guilt offering, not guilty. He committed no sin, nor was iniquity found in him. By his stripes, we are healed. And if you don't know Christ, now's the time to get to know him. There's no better time than right now. Today is the day of salvation. If you haven't placed your full trust in Jesus and you haven't put his blood on the doorpost of your heart, now is the day. Turn away from this world. If you listen to that whole testimony, like I said, I don't know where Big Nick actually is in his salvation. I can't tell you that. I don't know him well enough. But I can tell you this. He talks about how he got to taste every pleasure and so forth. And yet he found nothing in it, nothing of worth. And it was only Jesus Christ when he actually repented in tears that he found joy unexplainable. I pray that for you as well, that that would be true for each and every one of those who are lost, who hasn't truly repented and turned, put their trust in Jesus Christ, had a change of heart, which leads to a change of action. I pray for that for you, and I hope that uh, this would be a blessing to you and that from this day forward, you would seek, grope, and find after the one true God and throw aside all these idols. This has been Chad Davidson. And this is the 511.
News.